Okay. So, uh, for those of you who don't, I take the thing out of my ear, the voices. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Jeff Toth. Uh, I go by the handle Gek. Uh, I help rock. start. Uh, here's my information. Uh, I'm a security engineer for a major card brand that doesn't want to be named. Um, Tampa Hackerspace teacher and coordinator, DC813 member, and I help found DC407. Um, if you guys are local and you want to participate in the community, DC407, I believe, is having another meeting April 26th, 25th, one of those days. Um, Will, I just sent out an email, I believe. Uh, besides the Lando board member, I help run this thing. Um, you guys for coming, thank you very much. Um, any feedback you have, please give it to us at the end of the conference. Uh, I just started my own LLC. I'm, I'm an owner of a small business called Redshift Security, um, and I'm a generally a very cool guy. So the talk is uh, it's basically some stuff that I do that makes me somewhat successful, whether it's by accident or not. Um, it's, a, it's a lot of hard work that I have to figure out. I'm not a very well-motivated person. I try to be as motivated as I can, but I'm very lazy generally. So these are uh, basically some tricks and tips and things you can do to try to help motivate you and accomplish your goals. Again, it's not a silver bullet. Um, I'm just a person. If you can find other advice or create your own thing to follow, you can do that. That's fine. So what the heck does tactical uh, mean? Essentially, because uh, you know, because a Molly Christmas stocking is necessary. That's the essential thing of tactical. It's meant to look tactical. It's supposed to be cool. Everybody's all right. Cool. Um, it's not. Oh, there's actually a definition in my notes. <laughs> a descriptive word for equipment or clothing that does not have any tactical purpose but looks cool. Um, so it's kind of, this talk is kind of like a lighthearted look at the tactical kind of things you, you should do with your own mind and your own body to try to be successful, uh, as long as, as well as gear, which I discuss as well. Mindset. Um, so it takes a certain type of thinking um, to emulate an adversary. I come from this because my the company I just started, I'm performing red teaming and penetration testing, so this is kind of how my mind goes in case you're wondering. Um, so it, it takes someone to be determined and creative and sophisticated. It's hard to filter out you know, the noise to get what you want. A lot of time your own head is causing you to fail and you don't even realize it. A lot of the noise going on. Um, sometimes it's good to just do it. You know, As Nike says with their little logo, whoosh, just do it. Um, just by doing something you can often uh, just accomplish more. You know? um, Self-discipline. I like some of these uh, pictures I found. It's the magic power that makes you virtually unstoppable. So this is a hard one for me. Um, again, I said I'm a lazy person. I was raised uh, a spoiled, rotten brat. Um, I did not go into the military, so therefore I did not have a lot of self-discipline. This is really hard to do. Um, it's It may be something you suffer with. Um, I know a lot of people in this industry kind of suffer with um, A lot of people don't, and you see them, and they're really successful, and you kind of want to be like them, right? Um, this is what they have that you generally might not have. Um, so some tips to kind of build some self-discipline and confidence. Know why you want to do something. You have to have a goal. Yes, cool, you have a goal. But you have to know why you want to do that goal. What reason are you doing for it? Are you doing it for money? Are you doing it for fame? Are you doing it to become independent? Are you doing it to just you know lose weight, get healthier? You gotta determine that. Knowing those drivers of your goal helps you complete that goal much, much better, and much faster than you would just aimlessly wandering through goals. Um, it's very easy to get off track as well um, if you don't have a reason for your goal. Whether it's your kids, your wife, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, whatever. Um, having a reason actually helps add to the completion of the goal. A good way is to break down your tasks. Um, that looks like a big deal. But um, if you break those simple things down, you can simplify it, assign priority to everything, and you're good to go. And again, just do it. This sounds really stupid and simple, but if you just start doing something, uh, you get it done. This slide deck, I didn't start it until earlier this week. The outline for the slide talk, the slide deck, I didn't start doing until earlier this week. I just sat down and just hammered the whole thing out in a couple hours. Um, I just I couldn't get the motivation, but I just did it, and the motivation started coming. I started getting back in the groove of writing things, and it just happened. Uh, repetition is key. So just continue breaking down tasks. 
and assigning priority to them. Um, this is kind of very similar to how people in the military are trained. Um, they are, uh, I don't want to say indoctrinated, but they're, they go through a set of things that they have to do in basic training. Um, everything is repetitive. They'll do things a thousand times. They'll do a thousand push-ups. They'll clean the bathroom 400 times. They'll do whatever it needs to take that their drill sergeant has. Um, and one of the best advice that I've ever gotten from a friend is to be your own drill sergeant. You know, you won't have this, you won't have a, uh, Ernst, I forget his name. Um, you won't have him yelling in your face every second of the day. You need to be your own drill sergeant. Or you can recruit a good friend that won't put up your bullshit. Nine times out of 10, I find a good friend that won't do that who won't uh, let you put up with that stuff, way more valuable than that. Uh, if you don't have those, find one. I'm sure you can find one here very easily. Confidence. Um, Spider-Man can't hear you because his swag is too loud. So another key part of thinking and being tactical is having confidence to do stuff. Um, if, if you don't have the uh, confidence to complete your tasks, to move forward with your goals, um, or get through any of that stuff, you're, you're gonna be doubting yourself all the time. You're gonna be um, just hovering in the water, treading water. Unless you have the confidence to go forward and just make your choices and stand by your choices and live with your choices, that's great. So it's kind of hard, another thing like self-discipline, it's kind of hard to develop confidence, but we're gonna, we got some stuff that we're gonna go over. So completing goals. I mentioned breaking down the task earlier. Um, as long as you complete goals and you simplify your goals, and you just accomplish them, that little kind of snowball effect starts leading into your confidence. And then it feeds back also into your self-discipline. Um, it's good. Uh, and, and completing goals and breaking down goals, I, I had a note here, but it's out of place, but it says, why do you think the PCI DSS is broken up into 12 parts? Um, so start a journal. So if you're starting goals, or if you're trying to accomplish something, do a journal. Um, I just started recently bullet journaling. It's this new system to quickly, rapidly write down thoughts, notes, appointments, whatever. Um, it, at the end of the day, you sit down and you read through your journal entries, and it really helps you refresh what you learned, saw, experienced that day, remind you what you need to do the next day, or remind you what you need to do the next week, whatever. You don't have to follow bullet journaling, but as long as you follow, I mean, you don't have to follow any of this crap. But if you follow our journaling system, you'll be able to uh, recognize your goals, find your own pitfalls, even, and be able to refocus on anything if you have to. Again, this this doesn't happen overnight. I don't have any notes for this, but uh, Patience Avenue and Work Street, nothing is done overnight. This takes time. I believe I heard a statistic quoted from like a, uh, a personal trainer that I got a couple years ago, He's probably trying to sell me services, but it takes two weeks to build a habit. Um, yeah. Confidence tasks. Some things you can do to build confidence. Uh, it doesn't have to be this kind of stuff. This is definitely from a perspective of red teaming. Um, these are things I do myself, and also I, I lead off like that. Huh? You go shopping. I go shopping like that. I activate my swag, and I just bam. <laughs> so uh, another thing we're doing also in Tampa is we've got a red team meetup, and we're trying to get this moving like a tool meetup or a DevCon group. Um, a lot of these these uh, activities are things that we assign to the people that come to these. So for instance, casing a joint, <laughs> right? Um, you're gonna wanna start small, maybe do a coffee shop or video game retailer. You're gonna wanna go to there, you're gonna wanna figure out the ingress, egress, exit, entrance, exits. You're gonna wanna find the cameras, what the employees look like, over here any chatter. Um, maybe come up with a map, write it down in your little notepad. Uh, again, don't actually rob the place, because that would be bad and get in a lot of trouble. But planning robberies is fun. I mean, who hasn't done that? Raise your hand if you haven't planned some sort of robbery or heist or wanted to rip off your employer. So just start doing it. It's fun to think about. <laughs> it's good. They call these thoughts exercises. You know, you want to exercise how your critical thinking is going. Um, doing this kind of stuff is fun. Uh, we've gotten some really interesting uh, submissions to the Red Team Meetup. Uh, we had a guy doing marshals, um, and it's fairly large. He'd never done anything like this before, and it was a very detailed map, very aware of where security patrols, cameras, and he loved it and is addicted and going back and doing all sorts of these. Again, he's not robbing people. Please don't rob people at the back. <laughs> urban exploration. Urban exploration is legal, um, generally, depending. 
Um, but urban exploration can be fun. You can go out, you can be somewhere you're not supposed to be, you can see some things that people haven't seen in 20 years, 20, 30, 50 years even sometimes. There's a really great old abandoned hospital in Tampa that's been abandoned since 1954. It's awesome. It's, um, that kind of stuff is, again, it's fun to do, be cautious. Um, you're not, you're being somewhere you're not supposed to be, but it's an activity that can kind of build yourself up and build that confidence back up. Huh? Go to China. Yeah, it's another one in Tampa area. Um, everyday carry. So I'm, I'm going to go over gear and different types of gear you can carry. Start thinking about what you're carrying on your person every day. You know, how many people carry stuff they don't need, but they still have it in their pocket due to have it, right? Start thinking about what you're carrying on you, how you're organizing yourself. This picture is actually my everyday carry. I've got my keys in my carabiner, uh, my practice ballet song, uh, my e-cigarette, my bracelet, my field notes, my wallet, Bogota's pen, and iPhone case. It doesn't seem like a lot, but I put a lot of thought into what I'm carrying. Um, I'm missing a few things from there, but I did it kind of rust the other day. But these things are important to me, and I make sure that I have them on me every time I leave the house. Um, it, again, it helps build your organizational skills and it helps start thinking about what you're carrying, why you're carrying what you're carrying, do I need this, etc. Critical thinking, examining yourself. So prepping. Um, I, I'm sure you guys saw Larry's talk. Did everyone see it? Yeah, it was good. Um, prepping is cool. Um, prepping again is a type of thought exercise. You know, the zombie apocalypse doesn't seem like it's going to happen, but what would happen if it broke out in, say, Disney World. It started Patient Zero in Disney World. Um, come up with a plan, figure it out. Um, how can you tell? If it started, huh? how, if it started, if it started there, in Disney World? Um, so <laughs> they will not have vacant stairs after dragging their kids across the parks for three weeks. They'll actually look a little more excited than the average oh. Disney goer. So <laughs> it's, it's, very, it's a very magical place, and I can see the magic setting in over time. Um, <laughs> But I mean, we live, we live in the great state of Florida. Um, there's a lot of crazy things that can happen here. Uh, I, I live, used to live in downtown St. Pete last year and I saw a tornado touchdown in downtown St. Pete, which is an urban center. Um, you know, we get, we get all sorts of nat uh, natural disasters that occur, flooding, uh, hurricanes, tornadoes, tidal waves potentially. I think we got an aftershock in Melbourne a couple weeks ago. There's all sorts of different things that can happen. Being prepared, having the right gear, a bug out bag, if you want to say it. Um, in the case of emergency, no electricity, getting out, planning it out can you know save your life or save you some hassle. Um, also, it's fun to think about things like a zombie invasion or an alien invasion and what to do if you were to actually, yeah, okay, I'm glad. Uh, what you could do in those instances. Uh, Sarai, survival, survival, evasion, resistance, and escape. Um, Sarai is cool. Sarai is a little ridiculous to think about here in America. Um, if you're traveling abroad, especially to some um, South American countries, I believe, and some Asian countries, it, it, it's good to know these types of skills. Um, it's good to know how to escape and how to plan to escape and how to act and behave and, you know, again, think tactically. Um, it's not really relevant in your everyday life, but it's fun stuff to do. Um, it helps you train your mind, train your body. Um, yeah, you know, if, if you really want to have some fun with this, have a buddy or two buddies, you know, grab you in the middle of the night, put you in the truck of their car, drive you out in the middle of the woods, and then you have to get your way home. Um, I've done that a few times before, and it was a lot of fun. <laughs> um, so another part of Saturday and prepping and stuff, it's, it's, it's having multiple plans. You can't stick to one plan. Thinking with one plan only will get you in trouble. I, I've heard this mentioned in talks several times this weekend. Um, you're going to want to have a plan A, a plan B, a plan C, a plan D, E through Z. You know, you're going to want to have every eventuality planned and then be able to have a plan for any eventuality you didn't think of. Um, it's, it's good. So this is, a, this is actually a, a gift from uh, Daisy. Uh, some of the things you can do outside of the real world, if you really hate going out in nature and you hate being around people, you can simulate it. Uh, Minecraft has a hardcore survival mode where you will die. Once you die, it erases everything. Um, it's fun. Uh, Daisy exists, but then you run into silly stuff like this, or you get murdered for a can of beans. 
Uh, rust also exists, but then you also run into the problem of getting murdered for a can of beans by a naked man building a hatchet. Um, again, it's it's the human element, especially with survival, you're gonna deal a lot with the human element. Uh, just doing our day job will have to deal with a lot of the human element. Just by simulating it through this, you can avoid actual contact with people in the person, um, but still deal with the craziness of everyday contact with people. War games. Um, so, some war games to play. Uh, did you guys, any of you guys, Boy Scouts, ever did Manhunt in the middle of the night? I was, yeah, a couple guys. Manhunt is a good one. Uh, Urban Assassin is another good one. They're good games to play with your friends. You know, go out into a city, chase a person down, or try to kill a bunch of different people who have been designated to be killed. Kill, quote unquote, don't actually kill anybody. Um, these types of games can be fun. A lot of, um, there's a lot of Wikipedia entries for the types of, different types of versions of these games that are out there. There's also, if you guys are students or anything, a lot of universities participate in these types of things as well. Um, people watch. Uh, just sitting there and learning the patience of watching people and having the patience to observe and take in what people are doing and learning from it and trying to figure out what they're doing is a good skill to have. Um, usually you can, if you get good enough at it, you can figure out what a person's motivation is just by the way they're walking, just by the way they're standing. Um, people watching is good good exposure to that kind of thing and it can get your mind thinking. Make up little stories for people. How many times have you sat in a car and you can be like, oh, that's Mr. So-and-so is going to the grocery store to pick up some cat food for his 12 cats. You've done that? Have you done that? Everybody's done that. All right, um, build out scenarios. Um, if you have a space available, I'm, I'm very gifted that I have a very large hacker space and we're about to expand even further. Um, one of the things we're planning on doing is actually building a mock box and uh, doing our own scenarios. Um, Deviant Holm does a very, very good uh, thing at DEF CON every year called Black Bag. It's essentially the same thing, but on a micro scale. Um, trying to plan your way through that kind of environment and actually completing a goal or doing a task um, is, is good. It gets you thinking tactically, it gets you thinking uh, tactical stuff. Question everything. Um, don't take stuff at face value. This is just good everyday advice anyway. Learn to do your own research. Learn to form your own opinion, opinions. Um, again, like I said at the beginning of this talk, for all you know, I'm spouting a bunch of bullshit and I'm full of it. But in everyday life, to question things is to truly be a person that think as your own individual person. Uh, wake up, sheeple. Um, that was a joke, by the way. You guys are supposed to laugh. <laughs> Um, I'm not nervous at all. So it's it's good to start questioning things, even the little things. Uh, now we're moving on to fitness stuff. Um, I don't look like a guy who is tactically built. I've got I got I'm shapes, um, but it it's good to start thinking about now that you've got the tactical mind to start building a tactical body. Again, come up with a plan. Um, if you have a particular goal, like for me, I want to lose weight, I come up with a, a goal and break those goals down into individual tasks and I start planning on how to do those. Um, you know, it's, luckily for a, a lot of us with the grace of the internet, there's a lot of awesome plans you can follow already. Um, if you're into weightlifting, there's a bajillion beginner plans with weightlifting. Uh, for instance, mobility and flexibility. If you want to become more mobile and flexible, there's two plans right there from Reddit. Um, I do these every morning before I wake up and go to work. It wakes me up, makes me feel better, kind of feels like yoga, stretches me out. I don't I don't feel as sore from sitting in a chair for eight hours a day or walking. Um, body weight exercise, again, Reddit. There's also a link in here for parkour exercise to start building strength to climb over obstacles. So um, a lot of tactical work, especially if you're going to be doing red teaming and penetration testing in the physical world, um, you've got to have these, you've got to have a list of things you have to actually do, like climbing over obstacles or bending down or staying in a prone position for a really long time. you got to be able to do it. Um, it's not always necessary, but sometimes it is, and when it is, you don't want to be ill-prepared. Um, you don't want to be kneeling down and then not be able to get back up because your joints stop working. Um, walking. Uh, walking is great. Um, sitting at your desk for eight hours a day is bad. Um, a lot of people don't really know how to walk or to how to buy the proper shoes for it. Um, when you're walking, you're kind of 
want to usually have a heel to toe strike. And you're going to want to walk, I believe my, my new Fitbit like, like tells me to walk 10,000 steps a day. Um, you're going to want to walk a lot. Um, sitting at your desk is bad. This is kind of like a sit at your desk thing. Uh, eight hours a day, it actually is shown to increase your uh, morbidity rate. So if you want to live longer, get up from your desk once an hour for 10 minutes and walk. Running, um, similar to walking, running is good too if you can do that, I, I cannot. Um, it's going to be, uh, a, I'm sorry, I'm missing notes. Um, <laughs> but if, you, if you'd like to get into running, Couch to 5K is a great program. Uh, it'll take you from walking and running every 60 to 90 seconds, that switches and it'll build up from there. Um, standing is another thing you can be doing for a long length of time. A lot of people who stand or have to not move, stand in one place and they end up hurting. Um, if you're standing, move around. You know, don't just stand there in one single place. You, it's impossible for the human body to do that. Move around, shuffle, you know, move your feet, stretch your legs, do a little air squats, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, taking it to the next level. Um, so I'm actually, okay, I, I do have my notes here. So. You get fit, you get that, you get to a certain level and you want to start being coming challenged. Uh, there's a couple different things you can do. There's the Warrior Dash. It's a 5K with some obstacles. There's also the Tough Mudder, which is similar, which has a lot more obstacles and you get to crawl in the mud. Um, and there's a, a brand of tactical bags, but they have these uh, challenges called the Go Rough Challenges. Um, they're actually really difficult, but they're fun to do from what I'm heard. Uh, another thing you do is start getting into parkour. Uh, I will never be able to get into parkour because I'm long of limb and uh, clumsy as hell. Um, but parkour is a good thing you can get into to start building on that flexibility. Say you want to do flips and stuff, and you want to climb buildings, and you want to jump over stuff, get into that. Or anything you want to do. If you want to challenge yourself more and this isn't enough for to satisfy the appetite, just figure it out. There's tons of resources on Reddit in particular. I rely on that site a lot, if you guys haven't told. Um, that can get you into any sort of sport you want or create your own new sport if it doesn't exist. So gear, <clears throat> having the proper gear is important. Again, like I said, practicing EDC will help you start thinking about what you're carrying on your person. Uh, you know, I've got my own stuff I carry in my pockets and I got a separate list of stuff that goes into my own backpack. Um, a proper bag, I, again, the tactical stuff, there's a lot of awesome bags that, are, that look really weird. For instance, this is the Rush 24. Uh, I don't own this because it's very expensive, but it's got Molly anywhere and it's got a ton of organizer pockets. Um, you definitely stick out. I actually had a woman approach me when I was wearing my Molly backpack and thank me for my service. Uh, I never served in any military organization. I thanked her for thanking me, but then I got away from that really fast. Um, <clears throat> if you want to remain inconspicuous, there's tons of different types of backpacks out there. Um, you just want to get something that fits your needs, fits what you need as much as possible without going overboard. <clears throat> on your feet, again, um, one of the big recommendations I make for shoes, especially if you're gonna be on your feet often, is to go to a local footwear store. A uh, running shoe store or walking shoe store, they exist, but especially shops. Try to go for the mom and pop shops. They'll analyze your gait, they'll recommend a good shoe or a good insole or whatever you need. Um, shoes definitely, help with standing and walking. I've been wearing these boots all weekend and my feet are perfect. They're heavenly. Um, but if, if you find that you're wearing your Vans or you're wearing your Chuck Taylors and you're going to conferences and your feet are screaming at the end, you need proper shoe wear. That's, it's a flat shoe, it's not gonna work. Uh, if you plan on doing a lot of walking, it's not gonna work. Clothes make them in. Again, um, this is good everyday advice. Uh, you, you want to dress for what you're doing. Um, again, this is coming from a red team perspective, but if, if you're in a uh, business casual office environment, don't stroll in there with a t-shirt and some jeans. Dress with a polo shirt, you know, stuff like that. Especially if you start a new job, you don't want to be an outsider in your first day at work. You're going to want to figure out what everybody looks like, what everybody's wearing, <coughs> excuse me, and then try to dress the part. Um, accessories. So I got a lot of, uh, I should have broken these out, but I had very little time to craft these slides at the last minute. Um, so some of the miscellaneous things you might want to carry around. Uh, field notes are little notebooks. Uh, let's see if I have mine. They're awesome. 
They're about this big. They got dotted lines. You can keep track of everything. Um, I also carry around a pen, in particular a Fisher Space Pen, which is about this big. Uh, I don't have to have a lot of stuff in my pockets. Another couple things, uh, I also carry a pencil in my backpack in case the pen fails. Pens always work. I always carry a knife with me, so therefore I can sharpen my pencil. Um, tools, I have a minimalist screwdriver as well as a multi-tool. Um, I just happen to use those a lot. If you happen to need screwdrivers pretty often, try to find yourself one of those little combo screwdrivers from Home Depot or uh, hardware store. Um, I also carry an ethernet cable with me because you never know when you're going to need one. Uh, power adapters for every electronic device I have. Sometimes I have two. Sometimes I can't find any of them. Uh, backup battery charger. I have this little pen like, it looks like a large AA battery, but I can plug any of my accessories or any of my devices into it and charge them. And it lasts uh, quite a long time. Um, as well as a laptop, um, especially if you're going to do red team type stuff, you're going to want to um, have something that's light but somewhat powerful that suits your needs. Um, yeah, it's kind of hard to find that right balance of proper, powerful enough and not weigh a ton. So I've actually blazed through my slides in 20 minutes. Uh, does anyone have any questions, comments, concerns, or threats? Does anyone think I'm an idiot? Or does anyone think I'm awesome? I think you're awesome. Woo! Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. Does anybody have any questions? Does anyone do red team work? John does some. All right. Uh, I was hoping to have some experienced people in here. We're trying to develop a program in Tampa similar to Def Con groups, red team meetups. Uh, we haven't formalized anything yet, but if anybody has any input or feedback or would like to join in, um, it's through the Tampa Hackerspace. You can find it on the meetup. Yes, Jeff. I, I've got a, a suggestion. So I wear these Duluth jackets everywhere. Yes. They look like sport coats. This is a wearable man purse. It's got a ton of pockets, yeah. It is full of pockets, including zippered pockets. So when you go to the PSA, you jam everything in here and it goes through. But if you're carrying stuff, so if you're traveling, it's fantastic. Or if you don't want to look like you're carrying your tactical bag, you can load this up. And if you size it right, uh, you can wander in places with, you know, wireless access point and phones and batteries and uh, all sorts of stuff. But it's, it's a lot more subtle than uh, yeah. And they don't also wear like iron. Uh, but you know, there, there are things like you said. If you, if you want to look tactical, you can. Uh, yeah, I've, I've heard that. Um, you know, BDUs tend to be the shoot me first pants. That's I've heard these referred to the shoot me first pants. So mm -hmm. it, again, yeah, you don't. You don't want to not fit in. You don't want to look like an outlier. Um, dress comfortable, dress the part, and you'll be fine. Anybody else? No? All right, I'm done. Thank you guys for listening.